What is up, YouTube? This is Fortress Striker, and today I'm at the Rock Game Shop with a current player from the regionals that yesterday at FYU in um, uh, Miami. Uh, what's your name? Oscar. My name is Oscar Reyes. Hi there. How are you doing, Oscar? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, what? How did you play in uh, regionals? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't place. So I went to the regionals with me and my team. Uh, my teammate faced me round six. Unfortunately, we were both X2 at the moment. Uh, he wanted to get to the top, so we played it out. Um, he got to advance, and he got the top after that. I just dropped. Uh, it was a good day, though. It was a good day. Uh, he got the place. He got 25th after that, so I was happy. All right, and what deck did you play? I played Infernoids. Why Infernoids? Uh, I felt like Infernoids is one of the easier things to take to the regional. It's just a really big powerhouse. A lot of people call it a Saki deck, but it's really consistent in what it does, which is basically I'm going to mill my deck and aggressively beat you by turn two or three. And even though you do get bad mills from time to time, uh, after a while piloting the deck, you can make up for like lack of resource. All right, so let's get straight to the deck profile. Okay, so the deck starts off with its normal summons, which is three Decatron. Can you turn it around? Okay, so... Three Decatron. Mm. All right, so this card allows him to ditch an Infernoid, send it to the graveyard, and then it becomes that monster by gaining its levels and its uh, effect. It increases the level, not copies it. It's really important to note that one because a lot of people felt like it just copied it. Uh, the ability to morph his level to the situation is amazing, seeing as he is a tuner. So he sets up your grave and he sets up control by sending power infernoids, which are the two bigger ones we'll get to later, that allow your opponent to be locked out of the game early on or to set up your yard for a big push at the end of the game. So follow that. We have one Raiden. Uh, he in, in himself, pound for pound, is like the best normal summon to get a mill out of. He gets you two in the beginning and two at the end, so he's an amazing turn one play. He's a level four tuner. He does access a lot, and he just uh, fuels you up if you just need a little extra. And finally, Card Trooper. Uh, card Trooper is just standard. It's just it mills three. It gets you there. It's kind of big. If they kill it, you draw a card. But he's never really usually there long enough. You usually overlay and make a Dante with him for that turn. Uh, why one? Because uh, you don't want to play a lot of normal summonings. The card's biggest powerhouse card is Reasoning, and it needs to hit a monster that can be normal. So you keep it to a minimum. Uh, these three are the best uh, normal summons the deck has. And you just want two other guys to provide more fuel in case you mill them off the top right away. And you need a little bit more gas to keep going. So that's all really the normal summons. After that, it's really standard. It's a three Hermandick. Uh, this card can be special and it destroys a monster. So it's really relevant. Uh, two Petrula, MST. Two Antras. It composes any face-up card on your opponent's board. Uh, two Pyramaeus. He gets to Night Beam, send the card back into the deck. He's a Night Beam Virgil. So he's really good for opening up and clearing your opponent's board when they feel like they have enough presence. You just summon him, send it back, and then continue your turn like if there was nothing there. That's all the small guys. You then have three in Adeldale. Uh, it's BLS in the aspect that it gets to destroy monsters swing twice. It is one of the biggest beaters that the deck has, and honestly, it's really good for that final push. He's the level 8 of the deck. Uh, then you have three Systemas. Uh, he's the level 7. He is amazing against Cosmos. I feel like in the regional there were a lot of Cosmos players. Uh, they used to swing with Farm Girl or they used to, cra uh, used to crash into them. They would banish and summon Forerunner. And since this card doesn't target, it was able to get rid of the 28 body that a lot of people struggled with dealing with. So it cleared up a lot of boards and you just left him on board and you were able to demolish. Uh, to Devate. Uh, Devate is the, one of the bigger powerhouses in the deck. He gets to tribute a monster and then negate and banish a monster. The fact that he just negates and banishes makes it really strong. You do get the power play opening up to send him with your Anuku. I mean with your Decatron here. And then turn one, what you normally do is you would summon Decatron depending if you know what you're going up against. Uh, for my regionals it was always Necroz. It was Necroz, uh, Cosmo, and BA. So you would open Decatron, send Devate, and it put a little bit of dent on their plan. They're forced to have to enter their main phase, swing into Decatron, and then continue their turn. And then if they attempted to, they would have to still give up a card. So Decatron always takes a card for free and makes it your opponent have to respond to it. Or you can turn him into the last guy, which is Anunsu. Anunsu's effect is he dark holes. But you can also tribute a monster to negate and banish a spell or trap. 
So against Necroz, if you felt like you had an answer, if I, when I felt like I had an answer to the Manju, Senju, or Colosolus, then I would just go Decatron and then go into Anunsu. There was also another reason why I would go into Anunsu, and I'll show you guys that later. But uh, those are all the monsters in the deck. It is 22 monsters altogether. It, we play two drag downs. This card was one of the MVPs of the regional. Drag down uh, opening up most times when you lose the dice roll, people want you to go first. If they know that you're playing this deck, they feel like it's amazing. Drag down is a great source of information. You would just rip apart their card, they would have to pick between two dead infernoids, and then you would just plus off of that and keep going, and then the whole duel you would know what you needed to. Which is why you'd be able to turn Decatron into Anunsu. You would rip out the Manju or the Searcher, and then you would just ditch Anunsu, and then they would have to try to find another way around it, which was really relevant at the time. We play triple reasoning. It's like the heart and soul of the deck, honestly. So what reasoning does, for those of you who don't know, it's you call a number, 1 through 10. And I'm going to keep milling my deck until I hit a monster that I can normal or special. I mean, just normal. Which would be the five monsters I showed you. If they call their level wrong, then I get the special of the monster and just keep going from it. And then everything else gets milled to the graveyard. It's the way the deck works. You feel the yard, and you get to hit the one creature you need. Uh, I remember early on in the tournament, I milled 24 cards of a one reasoning. My opponent then proceeded to scoop up immediately because he didn't want to deal with it. You play double Darko. Uh, you need board clear. Sometimes you just can't get over Vanity's Fiend. You can't get over something that's on the board. Or your opponent flipped an emptiness preemptively on their standby phase, which was a lot. Of, it was a really big mistake in my opinion. They preemptively flipped their um, their emptiness because they feel like you have no more plays and they left the creature on board. So then you just dark hole clear that, they lost their emptiness, and they usually left themselves really vulnerable in the game state to lose. But I mean, when facing this deck, you really can't do much because all of them are inherent summons. So you cannot respond to any of them unless you have a warning. They just kind of happen. Uh, there's no effect. And a lot of mistakes that were happening were that people were trying to make Dweller against me. But uh, Dweller couldn't do anything to them due to the fact that since they are uh, inherent summons, they do not stop it from going off. Uh, double Void Seer. I love this card. Uh, I can't play it at three because it clogs, but I love. I would. I wish I could. Void Seer says that I can target one Infernoid monster that I control when I activate it, and that card is unaffected by any card effect. So it's like a super lance on on um, just flipping it. When it goes to the yard, you can banish it, and then you can protect the Infernoid from being destroyed. It came in really clutch. Uh, people tried to one on one me. I've seared 101, uh, the Diamond Dire Wolf, Crab King, anything else that really tried to pound for pound me. If it didn't have a way to get around Void Seer, me being destroyed by card effects, it kind of went away. A lot of plays ended up with people trying to regeki me, and I had the seer for it, either in the yard or in the uh, face down, and it was amazing. Speaking of geki, one copy of geki. Why not? The best way to play Geki is when you rip it off the top. That's what my deck does a lot, so it feels stylish. Uh, one Void Imagination in the main. I would honestly feel like I would have played it in the side. This card is amazing though. So what it does is every Infernoid in my deck that's two or higher naturally becomes one star. So therefore when I condense it, I can special summon as much of these big guys as I want, the sevens and the eights, and then I get to spam the board. Now, the other part is, it's like a Shadal fusion. If my opponent controls a monster from the extra deck, I get to fusion summon an Infernoid, which would be this big thing over here, Tierra. And I get to send up to six cards from my deck as fuel for it. And then, its effect is it can banish three cards from my opponent's extra deck, uh, mill my opponent's top three cards from the deck, and then put three cards that I banished back into the yard. So it just refuels and it keeps going off. Uh, in theory, it is amazing against BA and Shadal when they leave a Construct open or a Dante on board, and then you just savagely punish with this card. But in the main tournament, since most of the things I played were Necroz, it was kind of dead at the time, and it was very underwhelming. Uh, the only thing I would change was I would just play it on the side. Uh, your other one of his Burial, it brings three dudes back into your yard. Really standard for a deck that just keeps banishing all of its fuel. Monster Gate, it's amazing. It's like a reasoning, only you tribute a dude. You're gonna keep going till you hit something you can summon. It was uh, then one rekindling. So rekindling can only target the Decatron in the deck. It brings back a fire monster with 200 defense, so it'd be Decatron here. So the main this card is amazing early, late, whenever you open it, because you can Decatron into the big guys, and then you would. 
send him to the grave to banish something, and you would then reasoning into another one or normal summon another one if you had the opportunity, and then you would rekindling for up to two decatrons or three decatrons, and then if that happened, you would just lock your opponent out of the game because you would have two judgments. We'd have one for spells and one for effects, and then they have to realize, I can't get over it. I really have to deal with a big dude on the board plus these guys, and that's in and of itself really hard to do. Uh, let alone if you exceed or make another board that they can't break. It it just does a lot of setup. And then for the traps, three needlebugs nest. It's really slow. I am not gonna lie, but I really appreciated it in tournament when I had to open up and lose a dice roll. Sending five cards to the deck was really fun, uh, was also really good. It gave me fuel when people thought I didn't have fuel because I didn't open the reasoning of the monster gate. So it just led into plays and it really abused it. I remember it was round five. I m managed to open all three plus a monster gate and I didn't have any creature like that I could summon. So I was like, okay, fine. I set three, sent 15, and by the end of the turn I had 39 cards in the yard, just one at the top of my deck and I just proceeded to OTK. And the last two cards are one of they're a Solemn Morning and a Torrential. A lot of people don't see traps in the deck. They don't expect you to have any back row. They expect it to be a Void Seer and nothing more, or a bluff, like a hero deck. So playing real traps threw my opponents off. I beat a Yang Zing player round three. We were coming close into time, and he makes an Armades because he thinks I have nothing left. And then I warning, I was left at 300, and that 300 and the ability to gate that summon is what won me the game. And I swung it. And that's the main deck in general. A lot of versions play a lot more aggressive. I felt like the deck needed to play a little bit like Light Sworn. Every card needed a purpose in and out of the grave. And every card worked, whether it was in the hand or in the yard. If it was in the graveyard for the monster, for the normal summon monsters, it meant that when I did draw a power card, I was getting one step closer to achieving my goal, which is like. That's my graveyard. Um, Alright, so, all right, so let's check out your extra deck. Why would you throw okay. yourself out there? The extra deck is missing uh, five slots because we had to give them back, but for the most part, it's really standard. Honestly, most of the cards that I play here are here. Uh, Gem Knight Pearl, because the deck has the level restriction where you can only have up to eight or lower on effect monsters. So synchroing into Gaia or making a Gem Knight resets the board like if you had zero dudes on board. Therefore, you can set up boards of swinging with 26 and two Atondos for 28-28. You play an Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller was really good. Uh, I ran into the situation, again, that I played Yang Zings in that round five. And it was really frustrating because they would just abuse uh, their ability to float and I couldn't stop it. So I would have to make a Decatron and then summon the Hermedic and then go into this, go into a Dante and then make a Dweller. And then I was able to pop board, Dweller, keep them away, and then just finish the game off there. We have a Draco Sack for your Systemus plays. Honestly, the level 7 is my favorite in the deck just because I can make rank 7s. Uh, rank 7s to me are just about as fun as rank 4s. They have a lot of silly effects. Draco Sack, when you exceed into him, he produces two tokens. Those two tokens are no are vanillas in that aspect. So you're able to create this, drop in a Nunsu, and then have infinite fodder, or drop a Devate, and then you're able to tribute off the tokens as if they were anything, and have a lot of monster presence there. Plus Draco Sack is popping another card, so you would get value. Uh, you play a big guy. Big Eye is just Big Eye. I mean, since it was created, it just it steals the cards for game. I have yet the Big Eye for game, but I Big Eye to Trish, and they had nothing to do about it. I swung for 29, and then they had nothing but to try and summon their own Valk to run over their own Trish and my Big Eye. If not, they would lose, and then I just uh, capitalize next turn after they wipe my board. We play Red Eye's uh, Metal Flare. He's a very interesting card, honestly, since it came out from the new uh, the, uh, Cross Rebellions, Clash of Rebellions. He says that he makes your opponent pay 500 for the activation of any card. So I did see Ignites at that regional. This card was played against them turn one, and they immediately had the scoop because it would burn them out every time they would play a card. Or I would make it after I make a giant push on the board, I would swing for about 66 or 28 or 56, and then they were on a counter where they had to realize 
if they didn't play their cards in the correct mathematical order, they would kill themselves, and I wouldn't have to do anything else. Uh, we play three Tierras, uh, because when he is summoned, again off the uh, six effects, you need to send three cards from your extra deck, so you would just send the other copies of this, and they do count as Infernoids, so you just field your graveyard for a bigger push anyway, and that's that one. Uh, one of my one technique I got off a friend of mine. His name is Scotty. He showed me this little marine arrow shark. The deck can play cowboy, but uh, cowboy is just not as efficient. But this level three cowboy here, this rank three is amazing. He burns him for 100 for every card I have banished. So mid to late game, I have on nature like eight to nine cards, 12 even, and I just burn them for all of that and swing for 19. So that's almost like a 27 swing, and it was for the last five slots uh, because I don't have him here. It was one Dante the Traveler for when you want to open up a card trooper and a Hermedic mill three, then you mill six essentially. And you keep going, and Exiton Knight, because it's pretty standard. A Diamond Direwolf, it pops itself, removes itself, and gets out of the board. And then the other two are left, honestly, to imagination, because I really... You need you can play an 8. I played a Scrap and a Felgrand as the last two. You get 8 a lot. Scrap Dragon is able to blink himself out of the board. And Felgrand is when you're securing game against Necroz. You just make Felker and swing. That's the last 28. They can't Valk it, because they're going to get... That's really the extra deck. All right, so let's see your side deck. All right, last but not least is a cyborg. I was really happy with my cyborg. Honestly, it put in a lot of work against a lot of decks. I start with three eccentric. I love this card. It's a fiend. It's a level three, and it's amazing. So on the pendulum scale, if you play it, you get to pop itself an MST, a back row which is really free because a lot of people feel like they have an emptiness out the only ones I have to MST are like Galaxy Cyclones I personally didn't like Galaxy Cyclone so I just played the hairs and it, this eccentric here and it just put in a lot of work you would pop anything that you need to or if you reasoning into it by mistake you could just pop their monster and then keep on going um, you would play two Fiend Comedian Fiend Comedian was an amazing card in this deck. It's either I win or I'm winning more. You toss a coin. If you call heads, I get to RFG everything in my opponent's graveyard. If I call it wrong, I'm milling my deck for every card they do. Can you tell what's RFG? Uh, remove from game. Ah. You would banish all of it. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, what happened again to my Necroz game, I would side it in every time, was I would let them kaleidoscope, I would let them activate their cycle, and then when they're trying for the push for their mirror, I would Fiend Comedian. Uh, I resolved it most of the time to remove everything from their yard and then they had no more plays they revealed their hand so they would end up with a unicorn and maybe like um, a Brian Eck on board and they realized they have nowhere to go afterwards so they can't push enough damage and since they didn't kill me and I already have a, a stack of a yard I usually killed them afterwards or I wiped their board and then we're back to them trying to kill me at that point it was an amazing fun card honestly um, we also sided in Triple Wavering Eyes for when we played against Cleefort and uh, Ignites. So the point of the Wavering Eyes is honestly to just search the Eccentric. And then when you played it against the Klee, they would pay eight. They would have their scale. I would let them pay eight intentionally so they can burn themselves a little bit, play their scale, because they know they need to pendulum to get over my 28 beaters. And then eccentric uh, Wavering Eyes and search my Eccentric for their loser turns and skill drains. Uh, this won me the match uh, against a Klee player. It was game three, and he attempts to Wavering Eyes himself. I just chain it, then they get no effects. They played their nothing, and they lost like three cards in the process. Now, uh, my engine that I cited, uh, a card that I saw everywhere yesterday was Retaliating C. Now, what Retaliating C does is that it banishes everything from your yard when it's summoned, if I attempted to summon with a spell card. So when I would play Reasoning, they would try to Retaliating C and banish my whole yard. But because I knew that card would come in game two and three, I actually sided out all of my power cards and I sided into a Lightsworn engine, which would be uh, Lila, Reiko, and two charges. So I decided that game two and three, I would play the game more at a slow pace. My opponents expected me to play aggro. And I turned it into a control where I would just use my engine to mill about as many cards as I needed 
this would get me three cards plus the Raikou is another six or I would search out the, uh, the Lila to pop the back row and it would still get me another three cards one guy wasted three Veilers on one Lila and I would just punch with it because he did not want me getting the cards so I infinitely got value and the Raikou was like the champion of the day so I would charge with the Lightbringer game and no one expects me to search a Raikou and then they think they would play a Vanity Screen but then I would search Raikou and realize that they can't do much because they don't want to run into the guy I had one player write Geki my face down, Card Trooper, because he thought it was the Raikou going into game three. And I just got infinite value just because at the end of the day, then they're now attempting to figure out what it is that you have set and is it worth trying to pop. And my last two cards are a Thunder King and a Kaiku. Thunder King is amazing. You just summon Thunder King, you can win a game by yourself. He's Okay. Um, as I was stating, Thunder King is a powerhouse in himself. You could summon Thunder King and then games on its own. Honestly, it's a reason it's limited to one, and it's still ridiculous. People play Mistake and Mistake and Arrest to just try to imitate Thunder King, but you can win a game against Clyforce just by playing him and then sitting on him and punching over and over. Kaikus for the mirror match and Necroz and Shadows because they're not allowed to banish, so Necroz aren't allowed to search the mirrors after I clear their board. They had to do it the hard way and hope to draw them and neg themselves out a little bit. And in the mirror match, if you drop a Kaiku, you're winning infinitely. Because it's either right Geki, Dark Hole, or Bust. And then that's really about it. That's honestly the side deck in a, in a slot. I am missing one card, actually, because I remember this was 14. I did play a Mistake and Arrest. It was very underwhelming, honestly. Uh, I played it. I thought that having a Mistake extra plus a Thunder King would do much, but it really didn't. Uh, the card was it lacked luster, and honestly, when I drew it, I felt like it could be any other card. The only regrets I have going into this event were probably not playing Mind Crush with the drag downs. I saw another Infernoid player going in there and he did that strategy. So essentially it's like we went back to Trap Dust Shoot format and I would know your hand and I would just Mind Crush everything in it for free. But that's been my deck profile, that was my Infernoid thing. Uh, thank you for your time. Alright, so um, what are your positives of this deck? Uh, what am I, what? Positives, like what, 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 what were the good things about the deck? Uh, the deck in itself, the good thing is that honestly playing a deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! I was out for a while, I was able to pick this up and honestly it's really cookie cutter in what it needs to do. It's basic in its strategy, I'm gonna put my whole deck in my graveyard and then I'm gonna try to swarm and kill you and that's usually putting your opponent on a three turn clock. They have three turns to try and stop you or you kill them and if you haven't killed them in three turns then you have to figure out how to grind it out at that point but it's really uh, difficult to get over it. The other positive is most of the creatures are inherently big and the DD Crow everything, so it's really good to like blink out of things or blink your board. Necros have a hard time trishing you if you can just set up a monster, tribute it away, and then they have no more board to go to. All right, and what are the negatives of this deck? What are bad? Uh, having to play around Retaliating Sea and Iron Wall. Those two cards lock me out of the game. Infinite and uh, also if you draw all your creatures in one hand. But in mo nowadays, most decks, when they draw most of the creatures, they lose. If you give a Shadal guy a bunch of Shadal monsters and no fusion, they end up losing that match, and it's, it's just bricks. Uh, this deck, the way I built it, doesn't brick actually super hard. I brick maybe one time during the whole tournament. But I drew all the other cards, and then I was able to use my needle bugs nest to keep pushing my game stay forward and not have a problem with it. I could live past turn two. All right, uh, and what cards would you change about after the tournament? What cards would you think would change after this? I would definitely consider just cutting one needle bugs nest and playing mind crush. I would take out the void imagination, take out the needle, and just put into mind crush. It felt really strong, uh, having the ability to rip your opponent's power cards from their hand, and because the meta just consisted of Necroz, BA, and Clyfort. I feel like ripping their power cards right out of them when they need to is amazing. At one point, I dragged down uh, a Skarm. Had I just had the, I had to do it the hard way. I dragged down the Skarm and then ate the Skarm. Had I had the Mind Crush, I could just drag down, let them add the Tour Guide, and then eat the Tour Guide for free. All right, and final question: uh, What were your um, matches? Uh, going into round one, I played against uh, Necroz. I played against uh, the guy that top, I think he was fifth place. Uh, he beat me games one and two with decisive armor. I had just a little bit of life left, but decisive was able to give him that initial push. It was exactly like I thought. It was I didn't have one more turn to kill him, so he capitalized and killed me with those cards. Round two, 
It was Yang Zing. I ate the guy for breakfast because the deck inherently just eats that deck for Yang breakfast. Zing. That deck uh, round three, I played another one of my companions here that come to the rock, and he was playing Necros. I lost because I got Trish two times in one turn. Well, no, two times in uh, turn back to back. I couldn't respond to it because I I drew all monsters, and at that point I needed when I drew my Needle Bugs Nest, I had to preemptively try to flip it, but I, uh, he denkoed and then just killed me. And that was kind of sad for that. After that, I was playing Hopscotch. After that, I ended up playing uh, Clyfort, and I won it out because I grinded it out. Round five was Heroes, and that match isn't really that hard. They make a Dark Law, and Hermedic did, their entre uh, did away, and then I Entre did away. And he paid half of his life, so it was like a two turn. I, it was one turn kill. 4,000 to make a Dark Law that got popped, and then just swing for like 4,000 that turn. So it wasn't that hard. And then round six is when I played my friend, uh, my teammate. Uh, he was playing Klee. We went into the game. Uh, I won, but he won at the top, so we gave him the ability to go for the top. Uh, he did. He made 25th with that, and that was honestly the end of my region. Th those were my matches. After that, it was just for fun. I played like two more decks. I played a Yang Zing player again, and I played a Cosmo player, and I 2-0'd both of them. But since it wasn't relevant, I just didn't count them. But that was it. All right, is there anything else you want to say? No, that's it. Thank you guys for your time. Hope you know. Hope you like the deck and see it and try it yourselves. All right, guys. So this is uh, Oscar's Inferno Fortnite deck that he played. Took it at the regionals in, in Miami. Uh, hope you guys can get, enjoy this deck. Give this a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment what you think about this deck. Uh, show this to your friends. Subscribe if you're new. Like my Facebook page. And this is Oscar and Fortress Striker signing off. Yeah.